So what does it take to be a Royal Marine? Well, given that I spent 32 years as one, I guess I'm in a good position to know. My name's Major Scotty Mills and I became the highest ranking black officer in the history of the Royal Marines. During my time in service, I fought in four war zones before taking responsibility for the fitness and performance of all six and a half thousand of UK Green Berets. The Royal Marines have shaped and defined my life. When a recruit comes in, much like a young man like me, who has got this aspiration to earn their green berry, I can tell you that what we're looking for is not the finished article. We're not expecting them to be trained marines. We're not looking for Olympic champions or World Cup winners. We're looking for team players who have got strong values and qualities who will never, ever give in. From the youngest cadet all the way up to the oldest veteran and everybody that served within that 358 year history of the Marines, they'll instantly be able to tell you about our commando values. Courage, determination, unselfishness, and cheerfulness, especially in the face of adversity. And why can they do that? Well, the Marines very skillfully, but not very subtly, put you in situations where you have to demonstrate these values every day. They have these words on a poster on a wall every two yards when you go down to Limpstone. And what they do is they take these words off a poster on the wall and they place them within you and it becomes a way of life. They help you to grow every single day. They take you to the limit of what you thought was possible. And then what they ask you to do is to take one more step forwards, climb one more metre higher, row one more or stroke. If they make you cold and wet and tired and hungry, They'll give you something to do that you can't do on your own. And what they expect to see from you is for you to live those values every day. The Marines save the hardest for last. In the last couple of weeks, you have to do the four commando tests. The nine mile speed march, carrying all your kit and equipment. You've got to pass it as a squad, as a team. The second test is the Tarzan and the assault course. Two assault courses together. The Tarzan course 30 feet up in the trees. No safety equipment. If you fall out the trees, it's just one of the most bad days at the office. The third one is the endurance course, two and a half miles of underwater tunnels with such obstacles known as the sheep dip and the crocodile pit, Peter's pool. And the final one is the world famous Royal Marines 30 mile march across the entirety of Dartmoor where you once again, you've got to come in as a team. The Marines ask you at the end of the longest and hardest training in the world to complete all those four commando tests which are on consecutive days. It's a true team effort where your collective performance raises so much higher than what any one individual can do. And when you realise that, you become part of a team where you stand side by side like a ring of steel, where you realise that anything is possible. At the end of the longest and hardest training in the world, the Royal Marines give you a weekend off. It's really nice for a minute. And when you go home for the weekend, you realise that what you've just done is effectively only a job interview. So now you're going to deploy on operations around the globe, jungles and deserts and mountains. Coldest I've ever been in is minus 76 degrees Celsius with the wind chill. That is chilly. They put you in situations where you expect the unexpected. They're always throwing spanners in the work in training. The Marines could talk about train hard and fight easy, where you leave no stone unturned so that when it comes to the crunch, and it always comes to the crunch, You've been there before, you've done the training, you start getting the little things right, you're living your values, you start to get some of the bigger things right and some of that magic starts to happen. When you work with such a force like the Royal Marines, you get to a point where you believe anything is possible, where that grows your confidence, not just as an individual, but as a team. And that belief helps you to replace something like fear. I've sometimes heard Royal Marines being described as elite. You won't hear any Royal Marine use that word but they are special in my mind. Over the 358 year history, the Royal Marines, both on operations and deployments around the globe, have excelled. We've got a reputation that speaks for itself. The Royal Marines like to think of themselves as a thinking man soldier. The perception when you meet a Marine is that it'll be someone who's in your face shouting, screaming, doing a million press ups, flexing his biceps. Well, it's a 180 degree polar opposite from that. When we do an action, during our training or otherwise, we continually feed back, always thinking about how we can improve. And it's those little details that make the difference between the Royal Marines and some of the other forces that I've worked alongside. I know instantly what the commando spirit means to me. To me, the commando spirit and the Green Beret means diversity. Do you know that no Royal Marine, past or present, has ever judged me 
on the colour of my skin, my background or where I'm from. But what they will judge me on is what I do and how I do it every single day. It's the very best of what I've seen, where we take young people and give them an opportunity to be able to demonstrate and unlock this potential to be ordinary people that get to do some extraordinary things. Do you ever cease to be a Royal Marine? I'm a Royal Marine 24-7 non-stop. My family and my kids will tell you that as well. But it's not about wearing your green berry on your head. It's in your heart. It's, it's who you are. It's an indelible part of your nature now and your character. You cut me open and I'm green inside. Our core family it drives us, it unites us and it defines who we are. We stand side by side with each other through the good and through the bad times. And it's the greatest single privilege of my life to lead Royal Marines around the globe. Us Brits, we keep our feelings inside. And whilst we might not shout from the rooftops, my experience of people like those who donate to the Veterans Lottery really do care and they really do respect those who serve and have given so much. If you want to support the veterans, then play the Veterans Lottery. Thank you so much.